He is known for accompanying Robert Peary on seven Arctic voyages over nearly 23 years. He is recognized for his participation in the 1908 to 1909 expedition that claimed to reach the geographic North Pole. His name is Matthew Henson. Henson was born on August 8, 1866, on his parents' farm east of the Potomac River in Charles County, Maryland to sharecroppers who had been free people of color before the American Civil War. Matthew's parents were subjected to attacks by the Ku Klux Klan and other white supremacist groups, who terrorized Southern freedmen and former free people of color after the Civil War. In 1867 the Henson family sold their farm and moved to Georgetown, seeking to escape racial violence in Southern Maryland. Matthew had an older sister S, born in 1864, and two younger sisters Eliza and M. Unfortunately, Matthew's mother passed away when he was only seven years old. His father, Lemuel, remarried a woman named Caroline and had additional children with her. After his father's death Matthew was sent to live with his uncle in Washington, D.C. His uncle paid for a few years of education, but tragically, his uncle also passed away. As a result, Henson was sent to attend a black public school for the next six years. During his last year of school, he took a summer job washing dishes in a restaurant. When he was 10 years old Matthew attended a ceremony honoring Abraham Lincoln, the American president who fought to preserve the Union during the Civil War and issued the proclamation that freed slaves in the Confederate States in 1863. At the ceremony, he was deeply inspired by a speech given by Frederick Douglass, an escaped slave and renowned orator who was a leading figure in the black American community. Douglass encouraged black people to pursue education and fight against racial prejudice. At the age of 12 Matthew ventured to Baltimore, Maryland, a bustling port city. He found a job as a cabin boy on the merchant ship Katie Hines, where he embarked on a remarkable journey to various ports in China, Japan, Africa, and the Russian Arctic Seas. The ship's captain, Captain Childs, took Henson under his wing and taught him how to read and write, providing him with an invaluable education and mentorship. Matthew Henson, a skilled African-American explorer, embarked on an extraordinary journey alongside Robert Peary, the seasoned Arctic explorer. The mission was to conquer the uncharted lands and make history by reaching the elusive North Pole, a dream that had captivated the hearts and minds of adventurers for centuries. As the expedition set sail from Greenland on August 18, 1909, aboard the ship Roosevelt, Henson knew that this would be a grueling and perilous undertaking. Joining them were four Inuit team members, carefully selected by Peary for their expertise in surviving and navigating the treacherous Arctic terrain. They formed a group of six men, including Henson and Peary, who would face the daunting challenges that lay ahead. The journey was arduous, with Peary's meticulously planned system of setting up cached supplies along the way becoming crucial for their survival. Battling through freezing temperatures, unforgiving ice, and harsh winds, they pressed forward, inching ever closer to their ultimate goal. However, as they approached the final leg of their journey, Peary's physical condition deteriorated. Whether it was illness, exhaustion, or frostbite, Peary reached a point where he could no longer continue on foot and had to rely on a dog sled. Recognizing the significance of their mission, Peary sent Henson ahead as a scout, entrusting him with the task of being the first to reach the North Pole. As Henson ventured into the unknown, he felt a mixture of anticipation, excitement, and the weight of responsibility on his shoulders. Every step he took, every obstacle he overcame, was a testament to his unwavering determination and skill as an explorer. Finally, after overcoming countless hurdles and battling against the relentless forces of nature, Henson stood at the top of the world, the North Pole. In that historic moment, Henson planted the American flag, symbolizing their remarkable achievement and marking their place in history. However, their claim to have reached the North Pole faced intense scrutiny and debate. The competing claim by Frederick Cook only added fuel to the fire, leading to widespread skepticism and doubts. While the National Geographic Society and the Naval Affairs Subcommittee of the U.S. House of Representatives endorsed Peary's team, others questioned the validity of their accomplishment. Over time, doubts about Peary's claim grew stronger. In 1988, British polar explorer Wally Herbert reassessed Peary's notebook, revealing essential data that was lacking. This revelation renewed the discussions and cast a shadow of uncertainty over the true extent of their expedition. Despite the controversy, Matthew Henson's role in the 1908-09 expedition remains a testament to his indomitable spirit and his invaluable contributions as an explorer. His journey to the North Pole, alongside Robert Peary, represents a remarkable chapter in the history of exploration, forever etching their names in the annals of human achievement. After Matthew Henson's historic expedition to the North Pole, he faced challenges in gaining recognition for his pioneering achievements. 
In 1912, Henson took matters into his own hands and published his memoir, A Negro Explorer at the North Pole. In this memoir, he provided a detailed account of his experiences as an integral member of the team. Henson modestly described himself as a general assistant, skilled craftsperson, interpreter, and laborer, highlighting his multifaceted contributions to the expedition's success. Despite Henson's written documentation of his remarkable journey, his contributions were largely overshadowed by the fame and honor bestowed upon Admiral Peary, the expedition's leader. Over the following decades, Peary received numerous accolades for reaching the North Pole, while Henson's role was often disregarded. However, within the black community, Henson was celebrated, and he was honored at dinners hosted by his peers in 1909. With limited recognition for his achievements, Henson sought employment outside of the world of Arctic exploration. At the suggestion of Theodore Roosevelt, he found work as a staff member in the U.S. Customs House in New York. Henson spent most of the next 30 years in this role, dedicating himself to his work and providing for his family. Nevertheless, Henson's perseverance finally began to pay off later in life. In 1937, he received admission as a member to the prestigious Explorers Club in New York City. This recognition marked a turning point in Henson's life and brought attention back to his incredible journey to the North Pole. The following year, in 1948, he was granted an honorary membership, a highly exclusive honor reserved for only 20 individuals each year. In 1944, Henson and five other aides of Admiral Peary were awarded duplicates of the Peary Polar Expedition Medal by Congress. This silver medal was originally given to Peary in recognition of his remarkable achievement. The acknowledgement of Henson and his fellow aides by the government was a testament to their vital contributions during the arduous expedition. Henson continued to receive well-deserved recognition for his achievements. In his later years, both President Truman and President Eisenhower honored him for his pioneering spirit and contributions to Arctic exploration. However, despite the growing acknowledgement, Henson's later life was not without its challenges. Matthew Henson passed away on March 9, 1955, in the Bronx, New York, at the age of 88. He was laid to rest at Woodlawn Cemetery, surviving by his wife, Lucy. Following Lucy's death in 1968, she was buried alongside him. In 1988, as a final tribute to their enduring legacy, both Henson and Lucy were reinterred at Arlington National Cemetery. The move was accompanied by a solemn commemoration ceremony, recognizing the significant impact that Henson had made on Arctic exploration and the enduring spirit of perseverance he exhibited throughout his life. Matthew Henson's experience of family extended beyond his immediate relatives. As he journeyed through life, he encountered the complexities of family connections, both within his Inuit son's lineage and his own birth family. In the early 1900s, Henson's only descendants were the children of his Inuit son. They represented the continuation of his legacy, bridging the gap between Henson's explorations and the generations to come. These descendants, born from the union between Henson and his Inuit wife, carried a unique blend of cultures and traditions. Their existence served as a reminder of the profound impact Henson's expeditions had on his personal life. However, Henson also sought a connection with his extended birth family. He recognized the importance of maintaining ties with his kin, despite the challenges presented by distance and time. In his lifetime, Henson identified families of two nieces as being part of his extended birth family. One was Virginia Carter Branham, the daughter of Henson's sister Eliza Henson Carter, who resided in Washington, D.C. The other was Olive Henson Fulton, the daughter of his half-brother, living in Boston. Although separated by geographical boundaries, Henson kept these connections alive through correspondence and photographs. In a display of kinship, both Virginia and Olive possessed letters and photographs that certified their relationship to Henson. These tangible reminders provided a sense of connection and belonging amidst the vastness of their respective lives. The significance of these extended family ties became evident during Henson's funeral in 1955. Virginia and Olive were the sole family members present, along with Henson's widow, Lucy Ross Henson. In a moment of shared grief and remembrance, they stood together as a testament to the enduring bonds of family. Recognizing the importance of honoring Henson's legacy, S. Allen Counter, a prominent scientist and advocate, recommended Audrey Mebbin, daughter of Virginia Branham, and Olive Henson Fulton as family representatives for any future ceremonies or tributes dedicated to Henson. Counter's recommendation reflected the acknowledgement and respect given to the connections Henson had forged within his extended birth family. Beyond the realms of his immediate descendants, Henson's impact on future generations extended even further. He is believed to be a brother of the great-great-grandfather of actress Taraji P. Henson. This shared familial tie links Matthew Henson's legacy to the realm of popular culture, where his remarkable story continues to inspire and captivate. 
Matthew Henson's experience of family was a tapestry woven with threads of exploration, duty, and connection. From the lineage of his Inuit son to the extended birth family he cherished, Henson's journey encompassed both the vast expanse of the Arctic and the intimate bonds that transcended time and distance. If you want to discover more adventurers on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button for my channel, and don't forget to leave a comment in the section below, telling us which adventurers you'd like us to feature next.